Hello, kindred spirits. Welcome back to Bits and Bob's Divination. My name is Caitlin, and today we are going to be looking into your month of November as well as Scorpio season. So let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so welcome back, my beautiful kindred spirits, and anyone new who may be joining us here today on this reading for your month of November, as well as Scorpio season. Uh, Happy birthday to any Scorpios out there, as we are going to be looking deeply into relationships, those main energies, as well as blessings. So this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm not going to go too deeply into it here before we start, but I do want to just mention, in case you're curious to support this space any further, that you are welcome to subscribe and you're also welcome to get a personal private reading if you want to look even deeper into your month, into relationships, or any other question or query on your mind. Um, I do snail mail readings where I send a letter to you in the mail. It's typewritten on a vintage typewriter and can be on questions relating to career, to love, to creativity, magic, spirit, however you wish and whatever you wish. So, do be sure to look down below for those uh, if you're curious. And there's also some other offerings that you can look into, such as spell and ritual papers. But I don't want to go too deeply into everything here. So we're going to go ahead and look at the piles. So I've done this array of uh, crystals here before a few weeks ago, but I was still feeling them today. So I put them in a different order. So here for pile number one, we have this piece of a red jasper stone here with these reds and these ribbons of black running through. So that's pile number one. For pile number two here, we have this piece of yellow jasper. Um, It also has these ribbons running through and has this more mustardy color. So that is pile number two. And then here, last but not least, for pile number three, I honestly still don't know what this stone is called, but I love it. It's this deep, olivey, dark, grungy green. Um, so if you like this one, this will be pile number three with the green stone. So before you start heading off to the timestamps, I like to invite you to take a deep and cleansing intuitive breath here with me so you can connect with the piles and connect with yourself for a moment. So let's go ahead and take that deep breath together here now. And as always, there's no right or wrong way to choose your piles here. You can choose all three of them for the month. You can play around with them. You can change your mind halfway through. There really is no right or wrong way here. So all the timestamps will be down below in the description alongside the chapter marks of this video. And if you want to look further into other things that I do on this channel or beyond it, do feel free to check out my Instagram as well, as that is where I get up to more magic, get up to more of my creative ramblings and other behind the scene things. So do feel free to check that out if you're curious, but we're going to go ahead and look here at pile number one. Hello group one, if you decide to choose this piece of red jasper, then this is the pile for you. I'm going to set it here so you can see it during your reading today as we play around looking into your coming month of November as well as Scorpio season for the biggest, highest energies, your biggest blessing on the way in, romance and relationship messages, as well as, like I said, Scorpio season, all of which will be doing so with the charms as well as the antique anatomy tarot and other decks here, which you'll see all of this listed down below in case you're curious what we get up to here with the decks and supplies. But feel free to get yourself cozy, settled, and comfy for this. And we're going to go ahead and get right into it, group one. So what do you have coming in for those major energies coming in for the month of November? So do feel free to send your energy in as this is a collective reading. You're always welcome to use your own intuition as we move through this. But let's see what we got going on for you group one so group one the month of november so your first card right off the bat is the two of wands also known as the two of rods in this case um, showcasing a lot to do with directions being at a crossroads or a fork in the road and needing to make a choice or make a 
uh, to kind of move in a new direction. Sometimes it can be a very small, subtle little shift where we're just kind of moving downwards on the path or upwards on the path, but um, sometimes it's much bigger crossroads. And since this is around Scorpio season, sometimes it can be much bigger themes. So we are going to see as we look at the other cards. Group one, the major themes and energies for the month of November. Ooh, okay, so we also have the page of elixirs. This says um, eternal youth, and it is the page of elixirs, also known as the page of cups here, which has a lot to do with sort of following your youthful heart as the eternal youth shows up here, or following your heart a lot of the time. That's what this has to do with following your curiosities, seeing where they lead you versus... Um, feeling like a lot of the time we get told to, you know, cut that, that question kind of, you know, like toddlers when they're three, they tend to ask a lot of questions because they're curious about the world. They want to know why this happens and why that happens and why the sky blue. And then you give an explanation and they ask and ask and ask. And I feel like you're maybe at a crossroads right now where you're asking a lot of questions. You're getting curious. You're trying to look down different points of view in different alleys and different directions to take and where that might lead you. Um, maybe because it's something very new to you, uh, something that requires a lot of questions. Maybe you don't have a lot of experience in taking one or more of these directions. But I also have one more card here. I'm trying to decide which one it is. It's one of these two. I think it's the top one. So let's see what it reveals. Okay, so we have another page, very the very much um, newbie energy that's showing up here, um, where you're kind of learning or or kind of learning on the spot, gaining experience, getting curious. So we have the page of blades, also known as the page of swords here. A lot of the time in the traditional writer writer Waite Smith decks. I'm having a hard time with my words today, so I just feel like I'm tripping over them. But regardless, the uh, Page of Blades here has a lot to do with, um, in the traditional sense, of a, of a person usually standing here and kind of holding a sword, but not really sure how to hold it. They're kind of awkward. They don't have the right stance. Um, and they're just kind of winging it. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, uh, a lot of us modern day folks don't actually know how to swing a sword properly. So... It kind of feels like you're definitely at this like precipice of a new direction that you're going to be taking in this new month um, of November and it's going to lead you down a crossroads, maybe going down a couple of rabbit holes to learn something new, to learn your new skills, especially since the page of swords or page of blades here has a lot to do with learning new skills and going down different avenues in terms of experience, kind of um, learning with your head, getting more of an intellectual or logical perspective on something. And then you have a lot to do with also kind of leading with your heart with the page of cups or the page of elixirs here. So the fact is that I feel like you're kind of maybe also while you're getting curious about which path you're going to take with this crossroads, you're also trying to figure out a good balance between working with your head and your heart, working logically, but also kind of getting a little bit more impulsive or using your intu intuition and your instincts uh, to kind of decide which way to go or which directions to lead you down. It doesn't feel like a hard turn. Does that make sense? Like, you know, when you, you hit a fork in a road, it's a very hard 90 degree turn or shift. This doesn't feel like a hard turn. It feels like a very subtle turn down a path that slowly starts to diverge. So I feel like you're, it's, it's definitely a slower moving kind of situation here, but I do think you're going to just begin down that path beginning to kind of play around with which direction to take so those are the kind of the energies that we're working with here for you for the month of november but we are obviously going to look a little further to seek out the energy that's most on your side this month i usually call it your blessing card but like i said it's just an energy that's really um, in your favor this month working on your side this month or you know the best tool in your tool belt so we're going to see what that is for you been loving working with this Woodland Wardens deck for you guys lately for these monthly readings. So we're going to see what you get. Group one for the month of November. Ooh, you almost have two here. I don't normally take two, but we're going to go ahead and do it. Um, very unpredictable. We have two paths, two cards, um, definitely two kind of energy showing up here. 
Okay, so we have both the vulture and asphodel, which is upheaval in this case, but I also like to see it as, um, you know, a vulture in another deck that I have. What, what word do they use? Let me just look it up real quick. Okay, I found it. So it is turkey vulture with digest. What am I cleaning up or converting? Um, so I actually feel like you're more so this energy. So um, I'm going to leave this one here. Ooh, I don't know. You know what? I'm actually going to trade this one out. So I'm going to go ahead and put this one back in the deck. And maybe someone will get it later. But I'm going to actually just leave this one out for you guys. This is the Prairie Majesty, by the way. But for whatever reason, I wasn't feeling the keyword upheaval for you. So I felt like digest made more sense for the card that we were looking for. Uh, so it says here, digest. What am I cleaning up or converting? And in combination, you also have here the beaver and birch home. This also has a lot to do with renewal as well, because birch trees have a lot to do with renewal, especially after upheaval, especially after really difficult upheavals and changes. So for some of you might be feeling that upheaval card, but for those of you who are feeling more of this combination, what I'm getting here is that there's maybe something that you need to clean up or convert in your home, in your personal space, in your the clothes that you wear. Maybe that's the new direction that you're taking. It could be more of a of a self-expression kind of change or direction that you're taking or it can be more related to obviously like your home, your office, your physical um, appearance or physical things in your life that you tangibly can touch that you're converting or changing, purging, letting go of, donating, um, recycling, repurposing, that kind of energy is coming up here for you guys for this time of year, which usually is in the spring, but maybe you're having kind of a feel towards um, reamping certain things around the fall season here in the Northern Hemisphere, at least. Also just feeling really cozy at home or making more time to be at home um, with family, with friends, maybe even um, being more discerning with who you let into your home, right? With that cleaning up or converting of energy so do see how this intuitively is really setting in for you but those are the energies most on your side this month the blessings on their way in uh, but let's look at your relationship messages so I like to pull a card or two here for relationships so this could be a card to to look into a very specific relationship in your life or more generally uh, it doesn't have to be romantic right it could be with spirit with friends with family with yourself or it can be romantic however you wish but we're gonna see collectively what's coming in for you all for the month of november group one so we actually had one flip over so, of course, you've got African Violet. This is very different from everything you've been getting here. Yours isn't following a very specific path. Sometimes they're all, you know, they all very much connect. So we're going to see here. But it says African Violet Spirituality. It's time to connect with what you believe. So there also could be some changes happening Um for those of you who have altars, this might be you converting or changing up an altar or space in that way, or you might be converting or changing up how you feel about your spiritual, um, your spirituality, your religion, your beliefs, and the foundation in which you stand on there. But also it could just be connecting with more spirits in your life, loved ones beyond the veil, those kinds of things. Um, I did a whole reading last week on connecting with spirit guides and connecting with spirits, so that might be a reading to look into. Uh, but regardless, it does seem like something's happening and there's definitely a focus on spiritual relationships in your life this this month. But now that we know the relationships, your biggest energies on their way in, as well as blessings, we're going to look more into Scorpio season. So we are going to see what's coming in when it comes to connecting with Scorpio season. And any Scorpios out there, happy birthday, by the way. Uh, but we are going to see how the energy of Scorpio, which is all about renewal, rebirth, um, it's connected to the death card, transformations, and creativity, um, charming magnetic natures, and then also this feeling of a deep intuition might be coming in as well for you guys this month. So we're going to see how you might be connecting with or bridging gaps between those energies um, and how you can best work with this Scorpio energy. So what lessons and energies are coming in for Scorpio season for you, group one okay so we've got dandelion here um as which is the number 33 i was also feeling the number three for you guys two and three are the numbers that i would 
uh, and we even got one and two. So one, two, and three. It's almost like a succession succession of steps that are happening here, um, taking one step at a time. Uh, but we also have Pimpernel as well as Dandelion. Pimpernel is really interesting with the fact that we had that like self-expression change because Pimpernel has a lot to do with being at a crossroads. As you can see, they they have this um this compass here, being at a crossroads, but being kind of stuck or frozen at that crossroads. Um, the the tale in which this card really talks about is how pimpernels will grow at the at crossroads because they are a spirit that just kind of got stuck there and then turned into a pimpernel and doesn't really continue to move on. They become very stagnant there. So it's making sure you continue to move forward, allowing yourself to change and transform and um, express yourself in maybe a new way. Pimpernel also has a lot to do with how you um, use your instincts and really listening to your bodily instincts, right? Like the, the hair raising on your, your, on your, uh, the back of your neck or up your arms, the way your stomach feels after you eat something, how your body reacts to different stimuli. So this is also showcasing too, how you might be changing and converting energy, um, in a more intuitive sense, especially since Scorpio has a lot to do with connecting with your intuition. Other lessons coming in here, we have dandelion. Dandelion is one of my favorite um, uh, favorite plants because it is super resilient. It is also, it's also a plant that gets such a bad rep, but is actually super, super good for the ecosystem. And they are a plant that helps to restore nutrients to the soil, to make sure that drought doesn't set in. It's a really, really good plant. And not only that, but it's a really good plant for you to eat and digest as well. So it's one of those things that just gets like such a bad rep, but in the end is actually really good. So whenever I see this too, it's showcasing too that there might be a path you're wanting to go down or a way in which you want to express yourself where in the past you didn't really like it or in the past other people around you, the environment, the people you surround yourself with didn't really like a path you might have been wanting to go down or kind of judged you or shamed you maybe for it and this is the month to maybe transform that energy take back you know the the agency and and going down that path and not letting someone tell you that dandelions are bad when you know for a fact at this point that your perspective has changed on that so there might be a huge perspective shift that is going to be transforming and Scorpio energy is going to help you with that but also there's a lot of these really deep instinctual messages that are maybe coming in from from your body that are going to help you to be able to navigate um, this crossroads that you're on. So those are the energies that we have coming in for you for the month of November, but we're going to finalize all of this with some charms. So we're going to cast some charms on top of the cards and see what they have to say and give us those last little details. So do feel free to send your energy in through time and space here, group one, and let's mix them up. We had so many just spill out of the bowl, so I'm going to go ahead and pick those up real quick. That happens sometimes. Um, but these are some of the ones that fell, in case you were curious. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set them back in here, but let's just go ahead and look at the close-up of what we've got going on here. So right off the bat, we've got a huge transformational charm. Like I said, the month of November and through Scorpio season is huge for transformation. And so you've got the transformation charm of this little pendant. It used to be a spoon handle, um, but got changed into a pendant. So it showcases a resourcefulness as well. The idea um, of repurposing or recycling, that kind of thing, coming back to an energy that once you maybe have used in the past and are kind of coming back to that with a new fresh perspective maybe reconnecting with a past version of yourself and kind of self-expressing yourself through the lens of a past version of yourself something like that there's a recycling of energy redigesting something um, and seeing what comes out of that um, in the end uh, in terms of digestion we have a couple of other things that are showing up here we have the queen bee charm or just the bee charm in general and then we have the music so this kind of is making me think like listening to your own tune um, there also could be a, a change in terms of like the music that you're listening to this month you might find that you find a new album that you're listening to a new artist that really just becomes 
really important to you and impactful to you. This also um, has a lot to do with collaboration and working together with people. And the 333 also has a lot to do with collaboration. So there also might be someone who's helping you to clean up or convert this energy this month in your home, in your physical appearance, in your self-expression that really wants to help change your perspective there because they are falling specifically on the eye here. Um, but definitely listen to your own tune here. Don't let them fully take over or take reins on that. Uh, we have a little can opener charm on digest, which I find is interesting since it has a lot to do with food. But the can opener has a lot to do with a tool in which to open a can of worms. So it also is an opportunity for you to maybe digest something that's been really difficult to open or to, you know, open up a conversation or something that's just been kind of on your mind for a while that you want to digest here. That you are, it's not someone else opening this can of worms or, you know, just coming out of nowhere. It's something that you are having the agency to do. We also have here the little femme charm. This one usually comes up to represent a female or a feminine um, presenting or expressing figure in your life or person in your life who's related to home and also related to possibly this page of um, uh, rods or page of, or sorry page of swords um, or page of blades which we talked about earlier are kind of wiggly they're not really sure on their feet so there might be someone who's going to help give you some more surety or give you some experience to learn from some wisdom to learn from um, because this is the owl of wisdom and then lastly here we have the monster charm which usually represents like things that we're quite anxious about or nervous about um, and that fell over here on listening to your heart and on the word convert um, or converting so it really feels like there could be something you're converting to or having a change of heart in and that might feel a little bit scary at first you might find that's a little bit scary or flipping you know your perspective flipping your whole world on something so definitely take your time with this be gentle with yourself when it comes to listening to your heart this month listening to those instincts and those impulses that you have because things are slowly changing this is definitely a month of change and transformation for sure for you so I do hope that this has been useful and helpful in kind of navigating your month of November. If it is or has been, definitely be sure to give this video a like and let me know in the comments down below. Always curious to see what you guys saw in the cards or in the charms themselves. So do let me know in the comments down below. And you are also welcome to, if you haven't already, to subscribe as I put out new videos every single Monday for love, career, spirituality. I put out pick a card readings. I have a couple of master guide videos um, and grimoire tours and things like that that you can check out. And um, I would love to hear your guys' suggestions of other pick a card readings or other educational videos that you'd love to see. So do let me know those down below as well. And if you haven't already, do be sure to check out the different offerings that I provide through snail mail readings. And I also do provide um, some handmade spell and ritual papers. So I still have some Samhain ones and I have a couple. I don't have a lot this year, but I have a couple of Yule ones. So if you want to jump on those, definitely jump on it early. So those will be down below as well. With that all said, though, uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys there. I'm wishing you the best for your month of November. And again, happy birthday to any Scorpios out there. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye. Hello, group three. If you've decided to choose this piece of yellow jasper, then this is the pile for you. I'm going to go ahead and set it here so you can see it during your reading today as we are going to be looking into your month of November, into the blessings on their way in, relationship messages, and Scorpio season messages. So happy birthday to any Scorpios out there. We're going to be doing that with the charms here, as well as several different oracle decks and the antique anatomy tarot, all of which I'll have listed down below in case you're curious about what we get up to today but yeah go for, go ahead and get yourself settled and cozy for this get yourself warm and cozy at least here in the fall season it is below uh going below temperatures right now so it is very cold so if you hear the heat on that is uh just because it's cold in here but <laughs> do feel free to get yourself cozy and let's just get right into it group two so what do you got coming in group two? Do feel free to send your energy in through time and space as always and feel free to use your own intuition as we move through this as we co-create this reading together. But let's see what you got coming in group two the month of November. Group two the month of November what do you got coming in for the main energies on their way in. So first and foremost we have the five, six, seven of rods. 
So rods in this deck are the wands. So the seven of wands. The seven of wands has a lot to do with sort of, you know, putting down your dominance in a situation, kind of, you know, putting down boundaries, telling people how it is. It's kind of a more confrontational card. So I'm curious to see how it's manifesting with the other cards showing up here. So group two. Ooh. What else do we have coming in? I'll look at that one here in a second, but let's go ahead and get the third card first. Group two. What else do you have coming in? Oh my goodness. We might have... No, that's too many cards. That's like a stack of three. So we're going to go with this one here. So we have two elixir cards, which are cups in this case. We have the Calming Tonic, number 14, of the King of Elixirs here, or King of Cups. And then you also have here the seven of elixirs. We have another seven. We've got two sevens showing up here. Seven has a lot to do with introspection and looking within. Uh, and we have here the seven of elixirs or the seven of cups. So the seven of cups, the seven of wands, and the king of elixirs. Definitely working with your heart more than your head um, this month. This month is definitely working more with your heart than your head. Working with your own instincts, listening to your intuition quite deeply. The king of elixirs really is a very creative um, thinker as well. So they, they think more creatively when it comes to trying to figure out situations. So there might be something that comes up this month that's going to be kind of confrontational or something that you're going to have to stand up for yourself with. You're going to really have to um, assert who you are, assert your thoughts, beliefs, or, you know, convictions into a situation because someone might be kind of challenging you this month. There might be someone who's trying to challenge your ideas or trying to kind of slither into your space. Um, definitely, I feel like it has a lot to do with you maybe being someone who's more creative, kind of a creative thinker or someone who is um, kind of at a situation right now where you're kind of feeling like you could take many different paths. The Seven of, of Cups talks about feeling very inspired or feeling very sometimes even overwhelmed by the amount of options um, that you are presented with right now. So you might be being presented with a lot of options or opportunities in your life right now, whether that be for career, with love, with um, different options that you're taking through your hobbies or other, you know, side um, projects that you might be in right now. But regardless, there might be someone in your life trying to challenge those or trying to tell you, no, you should, you should definitely do this one. Or no, you should definitely do this one. Or someone telling you that none of these are a realistic option. It just feels like someone's trying to kind of butt heads with you or put a little bit of tension on a situation that does not need or deserve that kind of tension. So definitely stand, you're going to be having to stand up for yourself a little bit this month and have to stand in your power, really stand in your, your convictions and your beliefs this month. So how is that manifesting when it comes to other cards that we might be pulling for you? So we're already seeing you standing up for yourself, some con convictions being said, some creative problem solving being shown. How um, else do you have, you know, some blessing showing up in your life? So this is the card to showcase an energy that is most in your favor or a tool that is the best tool in your tool belt, the blessing coming in from spirit. So we're going to see what that is for you. Group two. The month of November in Scorpio season, group two. So you have, ooh, adaptability, the fox and ivy. I love this because the fox is a um, animal that, or a creature that always kind of goes at their own. They're not like, they don't really work in a pack in the same way. And they are very much, you know, um, not alone it's not a lone wolf obviously because it's it's a fox but it's got that same kind of energy going on your own and kind of being very self-reliant and self um uh sort of assured in certain situations they don't really need someone else putting their two cents or trying to kind of this ivy almost feels like it's kind of trying to you know grab an ankle or hold you back in some way so adaptability is the word that they have showing up here and I do think because you have so many different opportunities in your favor, because you are quite a creative problem solver, that I think that your adaptability and your way in which you can cunningly move through a situation is going to work most in your favor this month. Um, and listening to your heart for sure is another part of how that is 
that adaptability is sort of manifesting there. There's sort of a cleverness, right? The clever fox. So I definitely think that you're going to be quite clever as well and being able to sort of move around any situation that arrives and you're going to be able to outsmart um, anything that might be trying to compete with you or trying to, you know, obviously um, kind of go against your, your beliefs or convictions or your own ideas and, and ways of which you want to kind of go whatever path that might be. Um, so when it comes to the next card that we're going to do here, I want to look into romance or relationships. So this could be romantic ones. It could be platonic ones with family, friends, uh, with spirit, with yourself. However you wish, do feel free to send that specific energy in. But we are going to look more collectively here uh, to see what might be coming in for you all for relationships. So group two, relationships for the month of November. What be coming in for November for relationships for group two? Especially since there seems to be some sort of tension showing up here felt one, but I kind of lost it, so I'm going to keep going. Group two. Okay. Let's see what you got. So we have the pitcher plant, insight. The answers are there for those who look. So the pitcher plant here is almost like telling you that there might be something in, or rather someone in your in your surroundings and the people that you surround yourself with who might have the insights to help you through this situation. It could be someone, like I said, butting their own insights in, but it also feels like there might be someone else kind of in your corner or wanting to help you out. That You don't have to do it all solo, you know what I mean? Um, that there might be someone who can help you keep that cleverness going. The answers are there for those who look, which is also telling me too that this, if this is more of a relationship with yourself, it's reminding yourself that you have the insights and the instincts to be able to move yourself through the situation, um, and quite smoothly as well, uh, especially if you look more inwardly, because we did have a lot of seven showing up here, which had introspection at the forefront and at the heart of it all. So there could be a lot to do with, you know, just really connecting with yourself, connecting back into your cleverness, your instincts, and reminding yourself that you're very capable of moving through this situation with your head held high. So now that we know the main energy is coming in, we know your um, biggest energy coming in in your favor this month, and then also some relationship messages, we're going to look into Scorpio season, right? So Scorpio season is all about transformation, renewal, it's connection to the death card, right, of kind of moving through this transformative energy. Uh, but it also has a lot to do with instincts and looking into intuition. It has a lot to do with charming energies of magnetism and things like that. So we're going to see how that connects for you, what lessons Scorpio season is kind of bringing out into your life and in the situations that you might come across, but also how you might interact with and benefit from Scorpio season. So we're going to see how that comes in for you for the month of November group two. As always, do feel free to send your energy in. So we have Magnolia showing up here, really great one. And then we also have a mysterious one. So let's see what they both are. So we're moving from the number seven to the number eight here with Magnolia. And then we have the number two here of Lily of the Valley, which talks about reflect reflecting and, and kind of that same sort of energy of, of looking for a new perspective. Um, so we're going to play around with this one here in a moment, but I want to actually start here with Magnolia. Uh, in some of the guidebooks, I remember this has a lot to do with how Magnolia is one of the trees that hasn't changed, like genetically hasn't changed much in like a hundred I think a hundred million years, right? Like it's older than the bees. Um, and so this is a plant that is very, you know, resilient. It's a plant that is very capable of moving through change that is happening outward. Even though there might be no inward changes that are happening, there might be things trying to happen from the outside in trying to change them, right? Trying to rock up their foundation and change their genetic makeup and, you know, all of that down the centuries. So when this, this kind of connects to you, there might be changes happening outwardly, happening around you in your environment, but not really inwardly. So I think this month isn't about it's about trying to make sure that nothing is trying to change you. There isn't someone trying to, you know, butt into your heart or butt into 
what you're doing and trying to change you from the outside in. You know what I mean? And when that connects to Scorpio season and the idea of transformation and rebirth and that kind of change feeling and, and really is a sign of change, like that it's one of the zodiacs of change, it's telling me that there are going to be a lot of outward changes that are happening, but that you are very much capable and clever enough to move through those situations quite easily and quite, you know, like I said, persistently and resiliently. Um, but at the same time, uh, making sure that people don't try to get into your head or trying to change you from the outside in. Uh, and then with the lily of the valley here, the lily of the valley has a lot to do with sort of um, reflection, right? We have this reflecting pool, pool here um, to look into, but it also showcases like when I look at this, it makes me think too that like once that drop falls into the water, there's no way to take it back. It reminds me of like actions to our consequences sort of feeling. And so there also might be situations that arise this month where you maybe have to make a choice or choose an opportunity that might be showing up here or words that are going to be spoken that you can't really take back. So being very careful with your words this month, being more, you know, considering your words and considering your actions, just taking two more seconds to like think them through might be more helpful for you and might give you more of the benefits of your actions and words than your you would look for otherwise if you if you just kind of went in very much on instinct or without a thought behind them. So that's another kind of more of a not exactly warning but just thoughtfulness that's coming in here with the lily of, val lily of the valley for you. So that being said, let's go ahead and move to the final part of the reading, which is the charms. So I'm going to cast the charms on top of the cards here and see what final little bits and bobs details we get for you all. So do feel free to send your energy in at group two and let's mix these up. Okay, so we had a couple that fell, so I'm going to go ahead and pick those up real quick. <laughs> and of course I had the uh, invisibility charm fall, so I had to, I was looking for a, quite a while here. So we're going to go ahead and zoom you in and see what you got here. So what I find interesting is here on the pitcher plant with insight, the answers are there for those who look. We got the sort of younger version of yourself showing up here. So this could be your childhood self. This could be your, um, I can't hold it for whatever reason. This could be your teenage self, your young adult, middle age, wherever you are in life, it doesn't really matter, but it's your young, a younger version of yourself, even if it was just you last week, that is trying to speak to you or to give you the answers, to give you the insights that you're looking for. So when this shows up, this is just telling me when it comes up with the pitcher plant of insight, that's where the answers are. That's where you should be looking to. That's who is trying to give you some answers that you might be looking for. So definitely looking to past experiences, ways in which you've maybe cleverly or adapted through a situation might give you a little bit of insight on how you can then use that same um, experience to fuel the experience you're currently in and to fuel um, the way in which you are going to navigate it. And that is showing up in multiple places because we also got the nostalgia charm showing up here on the fox and ivy of adaptability. And we also got the fluffy charms. This represents things that feel fluffy or feel second nature to you. And then we got the bowl, which is very much when it comes to that seven of rods of people trying to kind of get in your space you know a lot of the time it makes me feel like a horde of people with their pitchforks trying to come at you kind of situation uh, this is you having a lot of resilience to be able to stand up to that and stand up in that in your power so I really feel like you're going to be quite comfortable or comfy in doing that or you have in the past been in the situation or have experienced a situation like it that you can really look to the past and that's where the answers are to move through this situation that it's either going to be ones that are very paired parallel to each other or similar in some way and that you have a lot of insights and experience that you've already gained from a past version of yourself or a past experience that you can learn from and use in this current situation. Hopefully that made sense. We also have one falling between three different cards and that is the button of closure. Uh, so we have this closure charm because it makes me think of like, you know, buttons are there to close or open um, jackets and all sorts of things. So what right now um, are you maybe going through that is related 
to the lily of the valley adaptability and the feeling of creative problem solving that the king of elixirs or king of cups is bringing forward there might be a closure that happens or comes up this month um, a closure it almost feels like a closure of like not exactly necessarily a closure with a person although that might happen but also like it feels like a closure of a chapter in your life uh, that might be shifting and changing and transforming because we do have the transformation charm of the spoon pendant showing up here as well. So those are all of the cards and the charms that I have showing up for you this month of November and for Scorpio season uh, for you group two. So I do hope this was useful and if it was do be sure to give this video a like and let me know in the comments down below as always how it connected with you, how you saw the charms, how you saw the cards. I'm always interested in your perspective. And if you haven't already, do consider subscribing as I put out new videos every single Monday for pick a card readings, I have master guide videos on charm casting, and I also have a whole video on my grimoire if you want to look into more of the magic that I get up to for art magic and green magic. Um, all of that will be listed down below in the description if you're curious, but also you're welcome to subscribe to see everything else that I put out on the channel. And if you haven't already, you are also welcome to look into the ways in which you can support this space and support yourself uh, through the offerings that I provide. So I do snail mail readings where I send a letter to you in the mail for you to sort of treasure and really look through and deeply dive into any question or query that you have on your mind. And I also do provide spell and ritual papers that I hand make for you for any rituals and spells that you get up to to enhance them. So do feel free to check those out all down below. And I'm going to go ahead and leave you there. Happy birthday to any Scorpios out there. And I wish you the best for the month of November, group two. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye. Hello group three. If you've decided to choose this green mysterious stone, then this is the pile for you. I'm going to go ahead and set it here so you can see it during your reading here today as we play around with the charms as well as several different oracle decks and the antique anatomy tarot here, all of which I'll have listed down below in case you're curious what we get up to today with the decks and supplies. But at the heart of it all, we are looking into those main energies coming in for you for the month of November, as well as looking into Scorpio season. So if you are a Scorpio out there, happy birthday to you this month. I'm wishing you the best for that. And for everyone else, we're going to be looking into how Scorpio season kind of connects with you and how you can learn from Scorpio season this month. So... With that said, let's go ahead and get right into it. Do feel free to get yourself cozy. Feel free to put your own intuition and spin into this reading so we can co-create it together. I'm always open to see how you guys interpret the cards, but we are going to look into the cards coming in for the main energies for you for the month of November group three. So do feel free to get yourself into this space. Feel free to put your own energy through onto the cards and we'll see how they connect with you. So group three, the month of November, what are those main energies coming in? So right off the bat, we've got the Knight of Coins here. So I'm just going to say Queen, but the Knight of Coins, which has a lot to do with stable energy. The Knight of Coins, or the Knight of um, Pentacles in this case as well, uh, has a lot to do with stable energy, taking things one step at a time, responsibility, you know, it's very careful energy. It's definitely more practical energy. So we're going to see how practicality and taking things, you know, one step at a time, rational thinking kind of connects to what you might have coming in for the month of November. This can also just represent a person in your life who might be an ally or related to the energies that we see. Uh, but it can also be, um, and more so what I'm seeing for you all, uh, more of your perspective on the month. So I think you're taking a very practical route on the month. We also have the king, or sorry, queen rather of rods or the queen of wands showing up here for the month. And then also you have the uh, nine of coins here. Um, or also known as the Nine of Pentacles, which is really good cards to be getting. There's a lot of confidence showing up here for your month. There's a lot of practicality, taking things one at a time, responsibilities being met. And then we also have the uh, Nine of 
uh, pentacles, which has a lot to do with like harvesting energy. It's about taking your time, getting things done, and then really being able to reap the reward. So this is the month to be able to reap the rewards on something that you've been working and being very diligent on, um, really valuing your time and putting your energy into, and you're being able to really take the and reap the rewards on all of your hard work up to this point. So congratulations on that. That's awesome. Um, and if it doesn't happen this month, then you're definitely still working towards it. And this goal is very soon to be in the picture. And it's definitely worth the effort that you're putting in for sure. Uh, this card also sometimes I always feel like has sort of a spiritual element too. Um, usually there's a, a bird in the card that always makes me feel like there's some like a bird on their shoulder. So this always kind of makes me feel like there's someone kind of whispering into your ear some encouragement or some help um, to help you through as well to kind of get this moving or to to help you continue on your path to, to reap those rewards. So you might have spirit in the background kind of helping you out, trying to help make opportunities happen for you, opening up space or time or whatever you are looking for, whatever resources you need to get this um, to the point that you want it. Uh, so it, it can, you can get the most bountiful harvest that you can from this situation that you've been working so hard on. So this could be a project, this could be in career, this could be um, in a relationship. It really kind of could be different for each of you, but it's just something you've put a ton of effort into and are hoping to reap from those rewards. As for the Queen of Rods, this one's kind of interesting. It is more of a confidence card. The The Queen of Rods has a lot to do with confidence. It has a lot to do with sociability. Um, they're a very social, confident, very magnetizing kind of energy that comes from the Queen of Wands, which is very different from this practical energy that we have coming in. It's much more fiery, obviously, since it is a wand or rod card in this case. So it definitely feels like you're maybe gaining a little bit of confidence, maybe playing around with some more charming energy when it comes to maybe relationships. This might be flirting or, or getting to know someone or some sort of charming energy when it comes to um, uh, like standing up for yourself. This is a great card to have in your favor for the month and it also can represent just someone confidently coming in to help you on your path this month as well um, to help you reap those rewards. But you're you're coming off as being just a very successful, confident, practical, re reliable month for you. So this is very exciting. Let's go ahead and see what else you have coming in group three. So we're going to look into your blessing for the month. So this could be a blessing from spirit, uh, but this could also be be looking into the um, sort of energy most in your favor this month or the if you had a tool belt right this is the best tool in your tool belt so we're gonna see what that might be for you for the month of November group three so group three what do we got coming in for group three for the month of November interesting okay so this is a very different energy so where we had this practicality, this um, very just like kind of calming month coming in, we also have uh, the, the one that's most in your favor this month is the moth and eucalyptus and ending. Um, so this is very much related to like the death moth showing up here, the death card, which is also related to Scorpio season, which is everything that we're talking about. So this one, I'm definitely going to be looking more into your Scorpio season cards that we pull in a minute to see how this connects. But at the heart of it all, it's just saying that there might be something that you're finishing up, like we said, finishing up a project, reaping those rewards, being able to maybe even rest or take some time off um, from something you know, wrapping up loose ends on something, that kind of ending is the energy that that I'm getting here. Less of like a hard and fast ending or something full of a ton of grief. Um, it might be a little bit bittersweet, um, but it, that's the, the, the worst of it, really. It feels just like, um like I said, it's something most in your favor. It's going to be a blessing, a good thing in your life. So this really just feels like you're wrapping up um, any loose ends or just finishing up something and getting those rewards. So this really feels like a very good energy to have in your in your path here. So let's go ahead and look a little further. Like I said, we're going to look deeper later with your Scorpio season cards, but we're going to take a minute to first look at a card relating to your relationships this month. So we're going to see how this connects to relationships. This could be romantic or platonic, could be with spirit or yourself, family members, friends, however you wish to see it. But we're going to pull this more collectively for you all. So group 
three here. What do we got going on for group three for the month of November for relationships? Group three and anything you want to highlight. Group three. I feel like one keeps like getting away from me. Um, if you guys have ever, you know, shuffled cards this way, sometimes you'll just have one sort of skip. So, okay, so we have Bluebell, gratitude, be thankful, what is good now? This is perfect, right? Whenever we see, like, when our, personally for me, whenever I see, like, the nine of coins show up here, it has a lot to do with, like I said, you know, finishing something up, reaping those rewards. So there's going to be a lot to be grateful for, a lot to be, you know, a bountiful harvest kind of feeling. So this could also be, like I said, in relationships, if this is related to relationships, um, you're going to be feeling quite cozy with your friends, cozy with your family, feeling really good to be around them, wanting to sh show them and, and remind them, gift something to them or, you know, tell them how much they mean to you, how much you care about them or them vice versa. There could be a lot of gratitude showing up here, a lot of caring, comfortable energy showing up here for your relationships this month. So truly for you guys, it's it seems like it's going to be a very positive, very deeply connective and, um, rewarding month for for you so with that said I won't you know look into this too deeply because it's quite a comfy cozy card we're gonna look into your Scorpio season card so Scorpio season for those of you who are maybe familiar with the the associations Scorpios have a lot to do with and Scorpio season has a lot to do with transformation change that death card kind of feeling um rebirth and that kind of energy but it also has a lot to do with charming energy instinctual um sort of intuitive energies as a water sign right so we're gonna see how these kind of themes connect to you and the lessons that you might be um, moving through this month or any ways you can you know benefit from the Scorpio season energy coming in so let's see how Scorpio season is connecting with you this month group three Group three, Scorpio season. Okay, so we have fever few showing up here with the number 28 as well as 44 with bramble, which 44 I think is interesting as well because it is, uh, four is a number of foundations. And you know what's so interesting? Right on the top of the pile, I had a feeling Poppy was going to show up. So you also had Poppy show up here with the number six, um, which just has a lot more of that death card feeling. So there definitely is something that is ending this month, finishing up, wrapping up in some way. It's probably going to benefit you, even if it's a little bit bittersweet. Um, but that all being said, what I find is interesting is you have Bramble showing up here, um, which does show more of that tying off loose ends kind of energy, right, with this rope here. And Bramble has a lot to do with um, kind of feeling sideswiped by something. So it's making sure that just because everything's going good right now doesn't mean you still don't want to look towards the future or want to make sure you don't have random missteps happen, right? Sometimes when everything's going so good, um, we you know, don't look at all of the fine print. We don't always look at all of the things. We don't have our guard up, basically, um, which is a good thing, right? You get relief from that. You get some time off. You get some breathers from that. But Bramble here is showcasing that Scorpio season isn't going to be all perfect, um, that there are going, it's really important for you to still tie off those loose ends and tie off them very considerately and very, um, with a lot of, like I said, consideration uh, and making sure not to have any random missteps or mistakes kind of pop in there uh, because Bramble has a lot to do with like kind of feeling like you're not noticing that it's getting closer that this uh, rope is getting tighter so it's making sure that you're a, you know you still have your wits about you whereas Feverfew over here is giving a very different um, energy as well so where this one's not really relating to the energy of the ending card this is more relating to this queen of wands energy it feels like someone in your life right now maybe unknowingly is maybe not doing as well or they're not feeling as confident or not feeling as um, like things aren't going as well for them maybe this is where that ending is coming in maybe this is where that rope is coming in it's making sure that you you know consider other people around you and how 
you know, that gratitude is coming in or checking in on them. So this card is making me think that maybe this Scorpio season is about making sure to not only just focus on yourself, but also focus on other people in your life that might need your help while things are going kind of good for you. Um, making sure that, you know, checking in on other people and how you might be able to help them or support them right now because Feverfew is a plant that is very supportive, a very good ally to other plants around them when it comes to the scent that they give off. Um, and they're very protective. So it really feels like right now because you're feeling very confident, things are really working out for you. Sorry, I'm losing my voice a little bit there, but because things are kind of working out for you, um, making sure that there aren't someone, there aren't people around you that you could support or help in this, in this moment where things are kind of going up for you. Uh, so those are kind of the cards that we're getting here. I'm curious how they connect specifically. I feel like Bramble has more to do with the Scorpio energy where this is kind of just a curveball, but do take them how you wish. We're going to go ahead and look at the final parts of your reading with the charm. So do feel free to send your energy in to the charms here and we'll cast them on top of the cards and interpret them here in a moment. So do feel free to send your energy in here through time and space group three and let's mix them up. So let's go ahead and see. We had one fall on the ground, so I'm going to see if that one is meant to be there, which it was. So we're going to look a little deeper. Let's go ahead and zoom you in here with me. And let's have a little look. So um, the charms that I thought was interesting, first off, let's talk about this one. So we have one of the closure charms. This is um, like a little button. We had a, another pile that had a button show up here, but this represents endings, but usually ones that lead to really good beginnings or that are like they close up really well. Things are closed very clearly. Um, you know, there aren't any miscommunications or a bad kind of closure, right? This is a good thing. So again, more ending showing up here. They might be related to someone who is a Pisces, possibly with this fever few energy where I was talking about maybe checking up on someone, uh, but also this Pisces energy showing up here on the endings. Uh, you also have a little gear showing up here. So things are, you know, this is definitely something you were expecting. You know, it was in the gears. It's not something that came out of nowhere. And then we also have the, um, the bird cage show up here and it didn't fall open. So this usually represents something that feels very caged or that's been closed up for a while. So again, and this fell on top of this little red rope. So it feels like there's something that you've maybe thought was ended or you thought was closed up or something that you, you know, it just really feels like there might be just something you need to check in. And this red energy is showing up here as well. So I really feel like there's someone in your life right now that feels caged off, isn't maybe getting a clear ending or feels... I just feel like you maybe need to check up on someone who's maybe a Pisces in your life. So that's just something that just keeps coming through quite strongly. Um, so just checking up on someone, having a conversation with them, having a deeper chat, because we do have the conversational charm of this little teapot. Makes me think of like having tea with someone and having a, a deeper chat. So that showed up here also with the uh, Queen of Wands. So it might be someone who t typically is quite confident or comes off quite confident that maybe is just going to need a little bit more help this month. And then you also have the quarter charm, um, which is usually represents like a quarter of something or something that, you know, is like a quarter of the year. So this part of the this quarter of the year might be difficult for them um, or it might just mean that they might need your protection this quarter. And then lastly, here we have the vinyl charm or the um, this one's starting to die, which is making me a little bit sad, but it's a charm of like a record, right? So this makes me think of usually like a song or something playing on repeat. So it may be that this situation, that this project that you've been working through that you're wanting to reap the rewards from is maybe been taking quite a while, right? It's, it's, it's definitely something you've been working your way towards for, for even maybe months or years. So this is something that you're very excited to wrap up or that is almost there. You're very close. If it's not now, then it's, it's coming up. Uh, so that showed up here as well. So those are all of the charms and cards that I have here for you, group 
three. I do hope this was useful to you, and if it was, do be sure to give this video a like and let me know in the comments down below how it resonated for you. I'm always curious to see your perspective on the charms and the cards um, and the Scorpio season energy. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. And again, happy birthday to any Scorpios out there. Uh, and if you haven't already, do consider subscribing as I put out new videos every single Monday for pick a card readings. And I also like to throw in and sprinkle in some more art magic readings and, and art magic related tutorials and videos, as well as looking into charm casting and all of that kind of stuff. So do feel free to check out those videos or subscribe. And if you'd like to support the space and support yourself, do check out the private readings that I do, which are snail mail readings, where I send a letter to you in the mail on any question or query on your mind. I typewrite it on a vintage typewriter, and it's something that you can really treasure and deeply look into. So do feel free to check those out, as well as the spell and ritual papers that I have out for Samhain and Yule to amplify and sort of enhance your magic for the season that you are in. So do feel free to check those out down below. And I am wishing you the best for your month of November and Scorpio season, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!